Welcome to another Ethical Corporation podcast with me, Toby Webb. And today I'm podcasting with Daniel Franklin, who's an executive editor of The Economist. And we're sitting in Daniel's office at The Economist headquarters in central London. So welcome to the podcast, Daniel. Thank you. And uh, I wanted to start off by asking you how you think the landscape has changed for corporate sustainability in the last few years. I, mean, I know you don't follow it day to day, but you did write that, uh, what I thought was an excellent long special piece about three years ago. So I wanted to ask you what your thoughts are on how the landscape has changed since then. Well, as you say, it's rather artistic impressions because I'm not following it day to day, but it seems to me the, the, the really big event that has happened since I wrote that was uh, the recession, uh, a giant recession, and that has clearly coloured um, attitudes and, and, and really um, shaped responses in many ways to... to uh, to the ethics of business, um, and it seems to me it's it's been partly um, a good thing, uh, if, if one can say a recession is any, any, a good thing, but it, it, in that it's cleared minds about what really matters. So I think a lot of the fluff that uh, was at the time um, perhaps accompanying the boom, boom times, um, has gone away. I don't think companies can get away with that so easily. Uh, anymore, and it's brought forward, I think, um, more to the to, to, to people's mind a very hard-headed look at what really matters for the business, where um, sustainability issues, um, corporate so- social responsibility, whatever you like to call it, um, really adds value to the business, where where it's uh, um, smartly thought out. I suppose two other trends I'd, I'd mention. One is that you mentioned the word sustainability yourself. I think s- s- the language has changed, so sustainability has, has come to the fore. It's the way that these things tend to be uh, talked about particularly, um, although I think there's, again, a sense that that itself needs to be looked at rather carefully, uh, that it's not just... Um, environmental matters, clearly the, the agenda is much broader than that. Um, and, and then finally, I think um, one or two very big events that have, um, that, that have been centre stage, particularly the BP um, spill in the Gulf of Mexico, and that for a company that made a big song and dance about um, moving beyond petroleum, has again reinforced the idea that... Uh, it's how companies actually behave rather than what they say that really matters. Do you think, using BP as an example, that companies are missing opportunities in sustainability? Um, missing opportunities in what sense? The Business opportunities, perhaps to get into new economy technologies or to grasp them and get the trust of customers. Well, I think what BP really shows is that unless you get the basics right, and in the mining business particularly... Uh, or the oil business and safety is a prime concern and, and you can talk however much talk you like about um, doing good things for the environment say but unless you pay attention to the, uh, the very basic fact of, do, of, 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 of safety and sound practice um, then you will be found out and I think that, that uh, that's the real lesson from BP um, there clearly will be business opportunities coming up in that particular industry to improve risk management, to improve um, safety operations and so on. And there are lessons, I think, from the way from the aftermath as well, in the way that um, the, 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 the the fallout was handled in dealing with those with claims on the business and so on. Um, it'll become a major case study in how to handle such how to handle and how not to handle such major incidents Do you think it demonstrates that the regulatory bar needs to be raised for some of these industries or is that an overreaction? I don't think it's an overreaction I think the, the, the regulators in the case of um, offshore drilling were, um, were, were were not clearly on right on top of what they should have been on top of um, but it's it, it has to be done cleverly without choking off um, development because that could easily, easily also be um, quite damaging. So 
uh, I think it goes beyond BP because other companies were involved and if you look elsewhere in the industry, the similar practices seem to be followed, so the regulators have a lot to answer for. Would you agree with the statement that the big banks um, have not done enough to win back trust? And what do you think they might do to demonstrate a bit more social responsibility or indeed economic responsibility? Uh, I think as a, as a, as a broad statement, it, it's obviously true that if you were to look at um, uh, general attitudes to banks, I don't think they're uh, still not the flavour of the month. Um, and it doesn't help when um, the big bonuses continue to be paid uh, at a time when many people, at least in the, in the rich world, are still struggling with the aftermath of, of this recession. Um, I don't think that the banks will um, regain trust until, first of all, credit starts flowing rather more um, freely again through the economy. I think there's a lot of um, difficulties being experienced by businesses that find trouble getting credit by individuals uh, to raise to raise uh, loans and so on. Um, and uh, I think there's a sense that the uh, uh, the banks generally need to be much clearer in their communications with their customers on what they're selling. There was an awful lot of mis-selling that went on. Uh, and there's still a long way to go in making making sure that um, uh, banks are selling responsibly and clearly, explaining clearly what they're selling to customers. If we turn to The Economist itself for a moment, um, up until a few years ago, The Economist was quite controversial with environmentalists for taking a rather sceptical attitude around climate change, and until three years ago, quite a sceptical attitude around what we then called corporate responsibility, corporate social responsibility. Do you, as an editorial team, regret that stance? I don't think I don't think we, we would regret it. I think it was um, the it was always hard headed, and I think we remain hard headed. Um, but I think at the same time, uh, recognizing that the world had moved on, and that this was a a big concern that business needed to take care of, uh, needed to recognize that there were also Activities that were, um, as I called it in my special report, just good business, that came under the broad heading of social responsibility or um, or sustainability, uh, that needed to be recognised as such. And if you were attentive to those, then maybe um, your business opportunities would be broadened. So I think it's it's carrying the hard-headedness into a bit of a broader horizon that, that uh, is a more comfortable place to, to be for us editorially. And what about the climate change issue? Was that a um, was that a, a, a big meeting in, in the, in the, among the editorial team to talk about your, your stance on that? Because that did shift relatively abruptly, didn't, is that right? Uh, I don't know if there was a big meeting, but there are... Uh, there's, there's ongoing discussions on all issues and that's no different and um, the weight of evidence I think uh, became became clearer um, and we, we have always again I think tried to keep a very hard headed attitude to what policy should be um, while taking the view that that um, as a matter of sound risk management, even if you, even if there's areas of uncertainty about um, quite how much man-made climate change is going on, this clearly makes sense to, to in our view, have a carbon tax, for example, um, and failing that to have uh, some other form of carbon pricing. Would you say that responsible business is now a quality of management indicator? Um, I think I'm, I'm not quite sure what you what you mean by that, but uh, because it's 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 full of quite laden uh, phraseology. It's a, it's a leading question, I'll admit. Uh, if I rephrase, I suppose some of the people I talk to in you know, the world of responsible business and in other areas of, of business are saying actually there shouldn't even be a term for it; it just should be part of yes. management. And yeah. does 
some believe that's increasingly the case among a, a small group of large companies. Well, if you if you talk about it in those terms, it's you know, just to um, take the title of my special report, Just Good Business, it becomes just good business, and if you're not too careful, uh, careful you get back to our uh, original line that there's no point in talking about it because it's just um, the pursuit of... Uh, of profit in another way because that's way, the way business will succeed. Um, but I think if you were to take it perhaps more in the sense that you mean it, that it's important to measure these things as far as possible. It's important to get a sense of um, how well management is taking into account these issues which can have a big long-term effect on their business, then yes. Um, I think it's a, it's probably a foolish or careless business that isn't doing so, and the more that you can do that, um, I think within reason and, and reliably, I don't think it helps to be um, uh, spending a lot of bureaucratic effort on a way that on, on measurements that perhaps don't mean all that much. So you have to be quite careful that what you're doing. Is, is as relevant and, and as focused as possible. But to that extent, I think, yes, it can be a sign of good management. And indeed, um, there are um, investors who increasingly look for that. If someone asked you to name a, a handful of companies that you felt were leading the way on responsible business or sustainable business, who would they be? Um, well, I looked at a few in, in my special report, and I, I, I sort of go back to this. It's slightly humbling because then some of them get into difficulties. So uh, some of the ones that, that, that were making um, uh, much noise about it then, then experience trouble. So I think it is an area where you have to be, where you have to be quite careful. Um, and uh, you know, no sooner had you talked about M&S um, being quite subtle and careful and then its results started looking uh, a, a, a little bit uh, shaky. But I, I think that in the retail area there are companies that are um, taking this very seriously, but are also very aware that you can't go um, that far ahead of your customers or you'll leave them behind. So um, as, as M&S put it at the time that I was doing uh, my research, you have to be just a little bit, you know, perhaps half a step ahead of your customers, but not too far ahead. Just lastly, could I ask you for your views on the, the current sort of ethical crisis in, in the British media? Um, the story spread outside the UK with uh, the New York Times doing some interesting investigative work on the British press. Uh, are we at a time of ethical crisis for some of the British newspapers? Well, crisis is a big word. I'm sure that the, the, uh, the newspapers, particularly the ones caught up in, in this, will, will um, survive perhaps with their, their ethics shaken but not stirred. Um, I think what you're seeing is greater scrutiny now for practices that may well have been going on for some time. It's not um, not the sort of thing that um, uh, that we are, are close to, or I am close to, at the at the Economist. Um, so I think you will you will find that there will be perhaps some some of these practices, uh, phone tapping particularly, will. Uh, will be shied away from but there's still fierce competition to get the story uh, there's still um, a great deal of intrusion to to uh, uh, report on things that sell newspapers and I don't see those pressures diminishing Daniel Francis